Jeezy Louise. I am gobsmacked. I'm oh. writing a book. It's going to be called Spill the Sea, and it's going to have all my stories in there. But basically, I need to change all the names, all the boats, all the sizes, all the years, because I'm not wanting to get assassinated. Natalia, you write that book. I will buy that book. And Thank and I, I love I love that you you leapfrogged uh, lawsuit to assassination. Welcome aboard another brand spanking new C-Rat interview. We are joined today. Oh, I should say. Mm. I'm Dylan, settled up next to Pat. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Good. Uh, we're joined today by none other than the interim chief stew herself, one Natalia. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having this little C-Rat. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, Long time coming. We've been trying to uh, snag this white whale because she is, while she is an interim chief stew, it's tough to get the chief stews on the on the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're they're uh, of a royal guard. You know? mm -hmm. The Praetorian Guard protect them. Yeah. What's the Praetorian Guard? Uh, I don't know. It's is a, that a Star Wars thing? No, no. It's they took it and they repurposed it for Star Wars, but it's actually a a guard that protected like Roman emperors, I believe. Got it. And uh, one counter in the Roman Empire column for the podcast. So, um, we have so many questions. We have fan questions. Uh, but we start every interview with this question. Pat, go ahead. So, Natalia, how'd you end up on the show? How'd you get on the show, Natalia? Oh, well, I did eight years in yachting. And then I got reached out a couple times on Facebook by, I think, it's like the talent recruiter. And then it was during COVID and I was locked in Perth. And I was like, I think it's time for me to spread my wings and get overseas back again. So, yeah, yeah I kind of just followed it up. I actually did my interview with the whole production team while sitting in the bathroom of a charter I was on. I was sitting on the toilet, folding the toilet roll, showing like they're, you know, trying to show off to them. Look, I can fold the toilet roll in five different folds. Sitting on a toilet, having my first interview with the recruitment company. Yeah. Well, now we do reunions from those places. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I was like, wherever the best lighting is, you kind of just walk around with your laptop and you're like, for, for my interview, it happened just to be on the toilet in like the guest bathroom of this boat I was working on in australia natalia if you have any sway with andy and those bravo people over yeah there, can you tell yeah. them we want to see you guys in person on the watch what crappens uh, i was gonna say see, crappens watch what happens stage we want to see you guys all dolled up all dressed up i don't I want know. zooms from bathrooms i don't want zooms. i was from gonna bathrooms. say the best lighting is on a set with a bunch of chairs and a bunch of lights that's the best lighting so let's and it, the whole crew. Wake up, andy all the crews from every single season, like we all want to do the reunion. I think during COVID, obviously we all couldn't travel. So then they put that kind of on a pause and started the Zooms. Yeah. Um, I know that everyone, especially from our season, is definitely like pushing for the Andy Cohen reunion. And it's just such like a fun thing. And I think it's like a treat at the end of the season to go like and have like a fun reunion on TV. Yeah, as you said, you get all dolled up, you get like nice cocktails. But yeah. um, I don't know, after this season, it might get a bit chaotic. Glasses yeah. might be Right. No, I would love to see you and Kyle in a semicircle together uh, live. But anyway, so before we start talking about this season, now we've only had one episode so far. I think it's necessary to kind of go back and kind of close some doors 100%. with the previous. Yeah, season. we have to talk about the witch from Manchester or wherever she was from. Your best friend, oh. Tasha. We have a lot of stuff to get into. OK, so just to start off, a lot of the barnacles wanted to know what was really the end of the relationship? um with your bro your your boat man's last season how did that end can you give us some insights or storm details and I, um storm and I, I think definitely it was the whole he's i just finished as i said eight years of yachting i was done i'm ready to like go move on and do some other things he was just kind of getting into it um where he was like i'm going to commit to yachts now i want to reach the level of captain and that is a long time on yachts and i wasn't ready to have a boyfriend that was going to be away that much. And I also wasn't ready to commit to going onto another yacht with him. So yeah. it was kind of like, yeah, for me, it's just not going to fit into my lifestyle. I think I'm reading between the lines here. Yeah, he you, talked way too much about work and he was clinging. Yeah, he gave you the ick. I think that's what yeah. happened. He gave you yeah. the ick. We film like 24 hours a day, freaking long, like, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And obviously not everything 
is in the show. Like obviously they put in bits and pieces and yeah, there was so much conversation. It wasn't me, the only one saying like, he talks at work a lot. Like Z was saying it, Courtney was saying, everyone was being like, oh my gosh, like it's all he speaks about. And I kind of just one night, I said like out of the 100 nice things I'd say, it'd be the one thing that I was like being short with him is that the stuff was that was aired. Sure. Look, we can't hold anything against you. The guy wanted to have sex while wearing that ridiculous hat. I, it, it's a totally big turnoff. He, what was the hat? He wore that stupid, what do you call those hats? Like uh, an in and out burger hat? No, it wasn't an in and out burger. It was, Natalia, what do you call that hat that he wore? He looked like he was in the movie Jaws fishing for a shark. I don't even know what to call it myself. Yeah. I just, but the thing that go with that whole, the watch, I got a lot of like, I think backlash about the watch. I was like, she's so ungrateful. He gave her a watch, but the big oh. deal is that Storm is sending a lot of his earnings back to South Africa to his family. So, like, multiple times I said, like, I can't accept this. Like, you know, you're sending, give the money to the family. Like, I, you know, he kept telling me about how he's sending back home. So I felt bad accepting that wash, watch. But of course, it's just like me being like, oh, I don't want the watch. Me, right, me. right, right, right. Well, um, yeah. Where is that relationship now? That's part one of the question. Part two is you later went on to have a boyfriend. Were you in a relationship while you were watching your last season? Yes. So me and Storm don't speak at all. Not because we're not friends, just because he's got a girlfriend. And obviously, like, I just don't cross any lines. But, like, we we finished on good terms. Like, we still, if we saw each other, would have a beer and stuff. But I think for the respect of his girlfriend, we just don't speak at all. And yes, while the other season was airing season seven, I did have my new boyfriend, the one that is now in this new show, um, yeah. talking about in the first episode, the one who wants the open relationship. And so me and him were watching like in his house, me with Storm on TV. And he was like, oh my God, like I can't be seeing this. And yeah. Wait, okay, hang on a second. He can't be seeing this? He was just like, I don't like seeing you with other people. And I'm just well, like, what the, well, okay. You know, I got to say, he doth protest a little bit too much. If he wants an open relationship, he should buckle up and grab a bag of popcorn and watch you date Storm. Um, you don't half of it. We're about to go into a whole shit storm of that. Not even <laughs> intended to the storm. But... All right. Now, before we get into that, where was your relationship with Kyle prior, uh, in between last season and then this season starting up? You're, you've um, got so many great questions tonight, man. Oh, thanks. I yeah, mean, they're real, questions. yeah, they're great questions. Mm. Things got pretty heated when the show finished airing because obviously we're like, we saw what each other had said, the stuff you don't see right. until you watch the show. Um, but then we both agree that, oh my God, we were just so tired. We said stupid stuff. Like we had so many good times. Like let's have a good friendship. So then we go into a good friendship and we enter this new season on very good terms. I speak very highly of him to the other crew being like, you know, this guy's coming on board. He's so funny. He really lifts the energy and stuff. So like we actually go into the season on extremely good terms. Well, that's what I think. <laughs> All right. Okay. Dale, can I keep rolling? Or you got a question? No, I want to talk about Natasha. Okay. Do you have any? No Natasha questions. Hit hit us. Okay. You Do you hate her? No, um, no, no. Um, she, she, I was actually very surprised because we finished the season again. We see what each other, each other say on TV. I heard some stuff I didn't like. She heard some stuff she didn't like. Like me criticizing her, like, you know, roles, chief stew. And then I thought like it was going to be a Kyle thing where we like agree that, you know, He's we're on TV. Ass. Yeah, we're tired. Like we actually get along. And I actually went and found out she had blocked me. So I was like. Oh, sorry, my notifications. Yeah, she had blocked me. So um, not blocked me, sorry, unfollowed me on Instagram just after the show finished airing. Oh, so no. So message her. I didn't, I haven't give, really given her much thought, if I'm being honest. Okay. All right. Wow. Um, you guys made a lot of, um, let's call them quirky introductory drinks, welcome aboard drinks. Like in hell. That girl, the thing is, is one thing is one surprise in the show was like the amount of times there would be like things on the priority list and she'd be like off making a mudslide triple something cocktail with a bloody banana in it. And I was right. like, we have other, like we have really other things that would take way more priority. And the yeah. things was, I would be cleaning up around the boat, every glass I would find would be full. 
Like right. no one was drinking. There was like maybe one out of like six that were fully drunk. Like the guests were leaving because half the guests don't drink, like let's say the vodka or the tequila. Half right. the guests like rocks. Half the guests don't like half the shit in like a milky cocktail. Sure, yeah, because they're they're adults and they don't want to drink uh, toxic waste shots. Um, I called it at some point. I think I called it the Smurf blowjob shot. Or yeah, something. Like, oh my god, yeah. People over- People over 12 generally don't like their drinks to be blue. So that was that was all her, right? That's not a thing in yachting. That's just no, Tasha's that's little. Creative. Like, if you know, let's say all the guests like tequila, then I could be like, oh, I'm going to make like a um, margarita with a twist when they come off the jet skis and like offer them, hey, would anyone like like a raspberry induced, induced, what is it, a raspberry infused, infused like mug, yeah. mug, made a tray here. And then if they like it, bring them a jug. But I think they're offering like milky blue <laughs> Like kind of like stuff that I like. There was one that looked like chalk milk with marshmallows on it, and I was yeah. like, "I've been drinking shots. This is going to make them vomit." So yeah, I started- <laughs> it's gonna make them shit their pants. Yeah, but she uh, yeah. she did it. Anyways, um, back to listener questions. Okay, okay. Uh, this is still a Patty question here. All right, so I'd say the most interesting part of the first episode is everything that takes place with Ruin. Mm-hmm. So can you give your personal insights over the confusion of the paperwork? Luca was pretty firm on his stance. He didn't openly throw him under the bus, but he pointed out generally presenting originals or having them with you in person is kind of industry standard. Can you can you give some insights into that? Um, so in regards to Ruin, like I didn't know half the stuff that was happening with him because I was so focused on the interior. Like, I didn't even know that his friend had passed away. Like I would have hugged him. Um, but in regards to the paperwork, yeah, hundred percent. As soon as you get given that documentation, when you do your courses, they tell you, you have to bring the originals to the boat. Um, even when you join your first boat and you're like signing up to your first vessel, they're like, make sure you bring your original certificates, your medical certificates. So, and everyone's like, that's so stupid. Like what happens if they lose it in their luggage? It's called carry on, keep that paperwork on you. It's like holding your passport. It's like, right. um, I travel with my suitcase 24 seven in my carry on. You have right. to have it. Now, and the show also tells this, like the producers and their recruitment of the Blow Deck franchise, they tell you to bring your originals. Now, I believe he responded this week by claiming that he got his license from some kind of third, fourth, fifth party company. Yeah. That gave him this documentation. And, and in fact, to, to quote him, he got scammed. Um, could you, uh, would you weigh in on that? What your thoughts are on that? I i don't i don't know i for to do that course you have to actually go into the school and i just think like if the school wasn't the school doesn't sound like it was legit like him saying it was in monaco captain saying he's like there's no school like that in monaco like you know i've known a lot of boys that go off and it's like i think a week course and come back so i don't see like a week course scamming him but i don't think he did the week i reckon he sent off some stuff and he just got a dodgy copy. I know people that have done it before in the industry. I've actually had people ask for some of my certificates and to change their name on it as well. Oh, and cool. So it's not like the first part of it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So it's like getting a fake ID, but not to drink, but to be in charge of a boat yeah. to kill everybody. Yeah. That's 500 pounds big. I um, think by like him calling his distances and like how off his distances were, like was yeah. a big red flag. It was like, okay, that was. You so know who off. was really good with distances? Luca, who's. <laughs> He's a hot little piece of ass, huh? Oh my god, I'm in love. Um, yeah. but no, no, he's got a girlfriend now. But he, yeah. yeah, he's definitely very popular with all women in the whole below deck franchise. Not just yeah. Star Wars, not just Australia. Like I've heard of a few. Yeah, yeah girls. Exactly. see, guys under five feet finally get their due. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know, I'll listen. Luca's a sweetheart. I don't. I honestly, I don't want to shit on Luca until he does something shit on him worthy. Right? And, you know, he's just been great so far. He's just so good. He's just such a flirt. Like, and I knew I was like, you flirt with everyone. Like he flirts with freaking everyone, but he's just got this charm about him. Yeah. Um, that you just kind of don't know what he does. Under five feet. That is, that is so off the top rope, man. Uh, that's where the shit storm with your uh, open relationship is coming from though, oh, because you've God. fallen I'm in love with, that. yeah, you've fallen in love with Luca. And so has, we all America. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> listener question. Um, Jane Kustik wants to know, what are your thoughts on chef Jack? Thank you, Jane. Lo- love him. He's the best. I didn't yeah. understand half the shit he was saying. Yeah. None of um, us did. 
I was just like, what, what? And especially I was so tired. I was like, what? Um, but no, he's amazing. We had such a good relationship. It's so important for like the, I was chief student at the time and for the chef to be like very like on the same level. And we had like no problems whatsoever. Everything went smoothly and still continues to, to go smoothly. And he's like one of my main friends, like one of my bestest friends throughout this whole season. Awesome. Yeah. Cause we were really concerned because um scousers are named after the slop that they eat i think uh so i was concerned that he was not going to be able to cook anything um but you know he was really talented yeah yeah he's, he's really good like and honestly he just does it so easy like it's just easy peasy and i was so worried i was like i hope i don't get one of those chefs that put out those shitty nachos like five seasons ago oh right 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 oh. yeah the, uh... she definitely got a fake id whatever oh yeah she was uh yeah. she was a homophobic russian spy yeah no, okay, no. 100%. no jack is fantastic nothing bad to say about him Good. Hmm. i do want to say on ruin i because i've seen people like attack him like he killed somebody um the guy wanted to be on TV, so he faked an ID. He could have killed people based on false documentation. Yeah, and yeah, being, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. but that being said, okay. Well, and you, you can't come onto the boat hopped up on Robitussin and or ketamine. It's just not okay. Well, you know, you can't do that. Allegedly. Boy, okay. finally now he's got the right certificate. So, you know, it could yeah. be the weird thing that he, maybe he did get effed over, but I just yeah. don't Mm. Uh, Steph Goreski wants to know, did Captain Sandy, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they want to know, we got to back up to this open relationship. Are you comfortable with kind of uh, letting us know where you currently are in your relationship status? I'm single. Um, after filming, I found out something very, very horrific, like extremely traumatizing that uh, I haven't talked about yet. Like, you know, it was bad. Sorry, and- Natalia. Date an accountant. They're boring, but they don't just find a boring person. <laughs> Enough of I the mean. bad boy shit. Okay. This open relationship that. stuff. Well, I was the way I met this last guy, I was running like what you'd call a billionaire's boys club. This is before we started filming the new show. And I met him through that. We I didn't actually like him when I first met him. I was like, this guy is such a tool. And then as we were living in Ibiza and I was looking after him and all the other guests, I got like some love for him. And then I found out after I said, I love you, that he wanted an open relationship. And when I got back from filming, he got back from Thailand. Okay. And mm-hmm. yeah, I found out he's very honest. I'll give him that. He told me the amount of people he'd slept with. And let's just say it's bigger than a football team. Yeah. 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 That's a 52 man roster uh, or Australian soccer. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. What the fuck is a billionaire's boys club? So I was running, there was like, it's like where guys are more like millionaires, not billionaires. Um, They all sign up like a membership to a club. And then I would like host them, like organize the, let's say the planes that they went to Cannes. And then there's like the Cannes Film Festival. And then oh, the Monaco Grand Prix, um, fly in all the girls that they're dating, organize that stuff, organize basic planes, villas, making sure that they get the most elite service as well. Whatever they want like that, helicopters, anything. So this kind of crosses over to a question from Rachel Griffith. She wants to know if you've ever dated a charter guest. Um, dated my boss once. <laughs> a captain? Uh, no, no, like the owner of the boat. Oh, well, that's different. God, yeah, running, so- that cl- running that fucking, you know, it's like you're when you're 18, 20, you can be in a fraternity. Mm-hmm. When you're older, you shouldn't be in a fraternity. You can have groups of friends and stuff, but you must be very good at shirking advances because these guys sound like <laughs> <laughs> absolute scumbags. There's no oh, way yes. that can happen. You know how to deal with them, like a lot of them, but I had one um owner come up to me. It was like during COVID and he was just like, oh my God, I actually really love you. And I left my girl for you. And I was just like, oh my God. And then basically- one drink, two drink. There I was. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Didn't last long. Didn't last long. Didn't last yeah. long. Well, I know we don't have you for too uh, too long, so I'll just do some quick fire hits here. Um, do you have any good worst charter guest ever stories? Yeah. Good charter guest. Um, worst. Good, uh, worst. No, the worst. Charter guest. Worst charter seen. guest. Um, I would have to say it's what every one says it's bringing in. I had one guy that I used to work for a billionaire, him and his two sons shared one prostitute over the course of three days. And while the wife left on the jet back to, um, somewhere in America with his daughter. Whoa. Wow. Dad, two sons, very big, uh, very fancy American guy. 
Um, yeah, basically him and his two sons and then and, and his best friend shared one girl was so gross and she didn't even get paid much, but yet the crew got all tips like 15K each for wow. three days. Now, this is why this is the number one show on Bravo, okay? This is a fascinating world. Jeezy Louise. I am gobsmacked. I'm writing a book. It's going to be called Spill the Sea, and it's going to have all my stories in there, but basically I need to change all the names, all the boats, all the sizes, all the years, because I'm not wanting to get assassinated. Natalia, you write that book. I will buy that book. And Thank and I, I love I love that you, you leapfrogged uh, lawsuit to assassination because yeah. <laughs> you know the, these are the kinds of people that you're dealing with what do they do because there are these innocuous uh billionaires that are like oh i have a um a copper wire company and that's how come i'm worth 70 billion dollars like what are these just titans of industry like what the fuck oh, weird. Do? like you google some of them like some of them you're like oh yeah i know that guy i've heard of him and you don't find out who the owner is until you get to the boat normally and then you read like it's like a basically a Bible about him and his family and his friends. And yes, some of them have got weird ones, lots of oil industry, lots of dodgy. It's like, oh, ex-military turned oil um, magnet, da, 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 da. Yeah. That's like, yeah. Next one is like solar power, telephones, like just weird shit. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, richest yeah, yeah. guy I know in Los Angeles owns a cardboard box company. Yeah, that yeah, could yeah. be a front. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll wrap this up. Um, Sean Demiris wants to know: long term, will you stay in the yachting or transition into modeling? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. um I do Playboy now. I'm done with yachting, so I do full time Playboy. Um, Me too. Is, basically, it's OnlyFans, but not. It's like the classy version, and they don't allow some of the stuff that OnlyFans allows. Um, but yeah, I do that full time. Uh, did you want to plug that? What does that mean? Oh, is there a, a particular site or how do they oh, promote? Link, yeah. is in, link is in my Instagram bio. Great. Check that out. Uh, Liza Merdinger asks, um, can you hint at a little bit of the drama between you and Toomey this season without ruining it or giving us any spoils? Sure. Um, basically, Toomey comes on, I step down, and I just think she comes on with a very bad attitude, and I just feel like she isn't grateful for... Like, you know, she doesn't say, I feel like she just isn't nice to me and we will find out why um, soon. But okay, her and Kyle had a bit of time together before they got to the boat. Got it. And so you and Kyle are, what, did you guys go to breakfast this morning? Oh God, he's, I've had him blocked from, <laughs> blocked, yeah. I just, um I've got no time for him and I just think, I don't speak very highly of them these days. Okay. Mm. Wow. All right. I think this is going to be, all right. So give us a, a one out of 10 as a viewer. What are we looking at? You've watched below deck seasons of past. What are we looking at this season? Is this one going to deliver? And do, don't say a 10 because people will know uh -huh. you're, you're just, you know, I'm just lying. Um, yeah. for me personally, this is my, this is, um, because of the stress I go through and stuff, I'm going to give it a, I don't know. Like the show itself is going to be nice. Like it's better than the other ones. I can give it an 8.5, okay. but emotionally, my like emotional levels were like at a four. Like I was very stressed that season. Oh, amazing. That's going to be so fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I start off pretty good and then I'm just crying. And I think everyone sees that in the ad. I'm like, ah, like five different outfits, five different places around the boat, just crying my eyes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that should be I a really good time. I hate to enjoy your pain, but this yeah. sounds like a fun show. Yeah, thank you very, very much for your suffering. We appreciate it. Um, Wow, this was fun. Uh, a lot of fun. Everybody go check out Natalia. Um, Playboys, I mean, what a brand, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Got the magazine stuff, the online magazine in the Bahamas, and then we did some more stuff in Miami last week. So it's always All right. really What's your uh, Instagram handle for everyone? Natalia Scudder. And uh, Natalia... It, Stay away from these billionaires who can kill people. Okay. I, uh, I had to leave the yachting industry. I just can't tolerate it anymore. Half the shit that you say, you're just like, I just feel like it'd be wrong now because I know how wrong a lot of the stuff is. I just can't do a blind eye anymore. And I'm too opinionated. To yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, God, it's like fucking catering to Bond. Let us know if Anyways. we need to cut anything out. So, uh, so you don't get killed. Murdered. Yeah, we don't want to find out that your head was taken off. No, it's all good. My contracts are done and I didn't say anyone's names, but no, okay. my book and my bloody 
I, there's so many stories that I have. And every time I go back to Australia, my family are like, what, what that can't, and no one believes me. And then like, now they're all like, oh my God. Yeah. That's so true. The stuff you see on movies is what happens on yachts. Yeah. All right. Well, coming soon, the book and then the adaptation, it's like a Molly's game kind of mm. movie. I feel from this. Thanks a lot for doing this. Thank Italian. you so much. We'll talk to you soon. See you anytime. I'll be free. I'm free to speak with you guys whenever. Amazing. And we'll see you at BravoCon. Oh, perfect. No, it'll be so fun. Definitely come. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Happy Friday. Bye. See you.